This exercise is designed to walk you through some of the major concepts of Chapter 10 on liabilities. Remember that liabilities involve an obligation to pay someone in the future. In this exercise, Flanders needs to get some money to open a new store. His two options are to either borrow the money from a bank or to sell bonds to investors. Now suppose first that Flanders borrows $100,000 from Goliath National Bank with a 7% interest rate and a 9-month duration starting on November 1st. This means that we're going to have to account for the loan when we take it out, we're going to have to accrue some interest on December 31st if that's our year end, and pay off the loan with interest on July 31st of the next year. Now on November 1st the entry is really pretty straightforward. Um, all we need to do is debit a cash account for $100,000 um, highlighting that we have the money and then we need to show an obligation um, as a liability through notes payable. So we're going to have a credit of $100,000 to notes payable. Now it gets a little bit more interesting on December 31st when we have to accrue some interest for the two months between November 1st and December 31st even though we aren't actually going to pay Goliath anything. Remember we care about events rather than cash since we're utilizing the accrual based method of accounting. Now what I like to do is to figure out how much will be interest will be charged on a monthly basis. So to do this uh, we're going to take the amount borrowed which in this case is a hundred thousand dollars and we're going to multiply that times our interest rate which in this case is seven percent and that means that from an annual standpoint that we would be paying uh, a total uh, of seven thousand dollars in interest over the life of, of this year. And so what we can do now is take that $7,000 and divide by 12 and get a, an amount of interest per month of 583.33. Uh, and now we can take that amount of interest per month of 583.33 and say that we need to accrue for two months worth of interest. And so when it's time to book our adjusting entry, we're going to accrue for $1,166 and 66 cents. So on December 31st uh, what we're going to do is incur some interest expense of one thousand one hundred and sixty six dollars and sixty six cents and then show uh, this obligation to pay the interest um, through interest payable and that would be a credit of $1,166.66. Now on July 31st, we're going to pay back the loan with the interest. And we already know that the amount of interest that we're dealing with on a monthly basis is this 583.33. And so we know that there are nine months in this loan, and so when it's time to think about how much we're going to actually pay back to Goliath National Bank. We're going to pay them interest in total of $5,250 as compensation for using their money. So we know that we're going to be paying this $5,250. And, and it's just important to remember that in 2009, uh, because there were two months of this loan in 2009, we actually accrued for uh, $1,166 worth of interest, meaning that in 2010 that we're going to only need to be expensing uh, $4,083.34 worth of, of interest expense. Um, and so the entry to pay off the loan first off requires us to have a credit to cash for the amount of interest uh, plus the original principal amount. So we borrowed $100,000, we owe $52.50 in interest, and so we're going to be crediting cash for $105,250. Uh, uh, we don't have this obligation to pay anymore because we've already paid the money back. So we're going to have a debit to notes payable for the $100,000 loan amount. Uh, we calculated our current period interest expense as $4,083.34. And then we now need to pay off um, and, and, and reduce that liability uh, interest payable for the 1166.66. 66. 
And so just to recap, it's important to remember that that interest payment of $5,250 uh, reflects two months worth of interest that was expensed in 2009 as well as seven months worth of interest that was expensed in 2010. So next let's move on to the situation where Flanders is selling a bond to investors. Now bonds involve selling a promise to pay back an investor's money after a specific period of time along with yearly interest payments. So suppose that Flanders sells a bond with a face value of $100,000, a stated rate of interest of 6%, and a duration of three years. And note in this case that the market rate of interest is 4%. Now first off, let's think about well, how much Flanders is going to pay in interest uh, on a yearly basis to the purchaser of this bond. Uh, so in this case, uh, what you do is you take the amount of the bond, the face value of the bond, uh, you multiply it times the stated interest rate of 6%. And so we know that Flanders is going to have to pay $6,000 per year in interest to the holder of this bond. Uh, now we have to think about whether or not this bond is going to be sold at a premium or a discount. Now note that our stated interest rate is higher than the market interest rate. This means that investors can choose between buying my bond, which pays 6% interest, and somebody else's bond that pays 4% interest. Now obviously, my bond is more attractive than the alternative, so people are going to be more willing to pay for it. So if you think back to Econ 101 and supply and demand, when supply and demand take over, investors are going to want to bid up the price of my bond, because it looks better than the alternative. And they're going to do that until that it turns out my bond pays the market rate of interest, which is 4% as well. So what we see is that my bond will actually sell at a premium or for more than the face value of $100,000. And this is in contrast to a situation where the stated rate of interest is less than the market rate of interest. In that case, we'd be dealing with a discount and we'd only be able to sell this bond for an amount that is less than the face value of the bond. But how much is this bond going to actually sell for? We can calculate that. Uh, we can figure it out by, by calculating the present value of $100,000 in three years when we pay this loan back, as well as the present value of the annuity that's inherent when we're making three yearly interest payments of $6,000. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out uh, our principal, we're going to enter in our principal amount of $100,000 and we're going to enter in our annuity amount of $6,000. And then we're going to go to our uh, present value tables and those are going to help us determine you know, how to figure out the present value of each of those two items. Uh, if you look at the intersection of a discount rate uh, of 4%, and three years, the present value of one dollar factor is 0 0.88900. And so you multiply that out and a hundred thousand dollars in three years to be paid back in three years is worth eighty eight thousand nine hundred dollars in today's terms. That annuity uh, can be looked up and uh, through the intersection of uh, three time periods and again a discount rate of 4% but in the annuity table and the factor is 2.77509 and so the present value of those three interest payments is 16,650.54 and so that gives us if you add those two together a value of the bond of $105,550.54 so when we sell this bond we are actually going to get a little bit more uh, we are going to get $105,550.54. Uh, we're only going to put in bonds payable of $100,000 as our liability, and we're going to record an extra credit in terms of the premium um, on bond payable, and that's going to be our difference of $5,000. 550, 54, and this in turn is going to end up reducing uh, the cost of borrowing uh, in this particular case. And that's it.